iPhone 3GS was twice as fast, and we added some other cool features like video recording. For 2010, we're going to take the biggest leap since the original iPhone. And so today, today, we're introducing iPhone 4, the fourth generation iPhone. Now, this is really hot. And there are, there are well over 100 new features, and we don't have time to cover all of them today. So I get to cover eight of them with you. Eight new features of the iPhone 4. The first one, an all new design. Now, stop me if you've already seen this. <laughs> Believe me, you ain't seen it. <laughs> you've got to see this thing in person. It is one of the most beautiful designs you've ever seen. This is, beyond a doubt, the most precise thing, one of the most beautiful things we've ever made. Glass on the front and the rear, and stainless steel running around, and the precision of which this is made is is beyond any consumer product we've ever seen. Its closest kin is like a beautiful old Leica camera. It's unheard of in consumer products today. Just gorgeous. And it's really thin. This is the new iPhone 4. It is just 9.3 millimeters thick. That is 24% thinner than the iPhone GS. Again, a quarter thinner in something you didn't think could get any thinner. As a matter of fact, it is the thinnest smartphone on the planet. So let me point out, let me point out a few of the things, uh, a few of the external things on it. Here are the volume controls, volume up, volume down, and mute. On the front, we have a front-facing camera. We have the receiver. We have the home button. We have the micro SIM tray. We have a camera and an LED flash on the back. If we look at the bottom, we've got the microphone, the 30-pin connector, and the speaker. And if we look on the top, We've got the headset jack. We've got a second mic for noise cancellation and the sweet sleep wake button. Now, because there have been a few photos of this around, people have asked, what's this? <laughs> Some have even said, this doesn't seem like Apple. What are these lines? in this beautiful stainless steel band. Well, it turns out there's not just one of them. There's three of them. And they are part of the entire structure of this phone. That stainless steel band that runs around is the primary structural element of the phone. And there are these three slits in it. It turns out this is part of some brilliant engineering which actually uses the stainless steel band as part of the antenna system. And so one piece is Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and GPS, and the other is UMTS and GSM. So it's got these integrated antennas right in the structure of the phone. It's never been done before. And it's really cool engineering. So. We have an all-new design. It's the thinnest smartphone ever. It uses stainless steel for strength. It uses glass on the front and the back for optical quality and scratch resistance. It's got integrated antennas and extraordinary build quality. Again, I don't think there's another consumer product like this. 
when you hold this in your hands, it's unbelievable. So this is our all new design for the iPhone 4. That's the first one. Second one, this is a biggie. Something we call the retina display. What's that? <laughs> well, in any display there are pixels. Here's four of them. We start off with the retina display by dramatically increasing the pixel density. Four times as many pixels in the same amount of space. Now why is that important? Well, let's make more pixels. And let's say we want to draw the letter A. And this is the outside boundary of one of the strokes of a letter, the letter A. Well, as you can see, we turn on pixels inside that stroke. We can get far more precision the more pixels we have. And we play all sorts of tricks by putting different levels of gray pixels on that line as well to try to fuzz it for our eye. But when we zoom out of this, what you can see is that because we have four times as many pixels, we get really, really sharp text compared to what we normally get on displays of lesser resolution. Now the retina display has 326 pixels Woo! per inch. This is There's never been a display like this on a phone. People haven't even dreamed about a display like this on a phone. But it's more than that. It turns out that there's a magic number right around 300 pixels per inch that when you hold something around 10 or 12 inches away from your eyes is the limit of the human retina to differentiate the pixels. And so they're so close together when you get at this 300 pixels per inch threshold that all of a sudden things start to look like continuous, continuous curves. Like text looks like you've seen it in a fine printed book. Unlike you've ever seen on an electronic display before. And at 326 pixels per inch we are comfortably over that limit. And it's extraordinary. So let me give you an example of a normal display on the left and the retina display on the right. Look at the difference. Can you see it? Here's some more text of different sizes and different weights. You can really, really see this stuff. Once you use a retina display, you can't go back. <laughs> when you get to character-based languages, kanji in this case, it's also striking. And it's not just text, it's images and video as well. Look at the difference. This is the same image on a normal display and a retina display. Here's another one. Pretty amazing, isn't it? So what I'd like to do now is show this to you live. I've got an iPhone 3GS, which has got a widely praised display on it. And I've got a new iPhone 4. So let me get them both fired up here. There we go. And I can ask them to blow these up. There we go. Look at that difference now. This is pixel. This is, we had to get special projectors for this because most projectors can't display as many dots as are on a retina display. So this is pixel for pixel accurate right off these two displays. And you can really see it. Look at that folder there. Uh, and uh, let me go inside and you can look at the icon of the folder. Compare them, look at the text, look at the linen, look at the icon of the compass, the icon of the clock. Isn't that amazing? So now, let me go ahead. I'm going to go to some websites. I'm going to go to the New York Times today. And uh, let's just compare these websites.